Oh my god! This is not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. You have Kenny, you have Carlo, you have Bamba. There is a three-headed goat on the loose, and they are about to come to you. You got sports, you got anime, you got media, you got entertainment. The same convo, baby. Tap in. Okay, now it's time to conversate. Same convo on your airwaves. Bamba came to entertain and Kenny talking anime. Carla coming with the sports, they changing lives in major ways. You was tweaking out if TAC ain't on your playlist. If you come and listen, then you listen to the best. They not worried about the others, cause they better than the rest. Kenny okay. Carla bomb, but they put the others to the test. New episode flow, now tap in to see what is next. We Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to The Same Convo, the podcast where we talk everything sports, anime, media, and entertainment. It's your boys, Kenny, Carlo, and Bamba, and this is the sports segment. It's a lot going on right now in the sports world, and as y'all already know, I have my questions of the week, but I want to introduce y'all to the crazy reaction of the week, a.k.a. Crow. What I wanted us to react to is nothing other than the fight between Francis Ngannou and Anthony Joshua. Now, Ngannou started his debut in boxing by facing against Tyson Fury, who was none other than the current heavyweight world champion. And if we can't keep it up, but we had a whole episode on cheating scandals. And I was saying that that was one of the biggest cheating scandals. Now, what I wanted to ask y'all is, what happened in between that versus the world champion and what we just saw against Anthony Joshua? Because I thought Gannon might have it in the bag. I thought wrong. Probably what you saw. Shit, hold on. My fault. I was muted. I'm not going to lie to you. Everything that happened from the first fight, to end, it looked like Francis and Ganu forgot how to fight. This man, Anthony Joshua, was working. That last, literally, if you look at the slow-mo of the last knockout, and Ganu looked scared. It didn't look like he was trying to block. Like, he didn't look. He was, he was like, literally like that. And I was like, oh, no. So, I shocked. Very shocked. It, that Anthony Joshua played with that man and put him down easily. And he had just got up from, he got knocked out, knocked out uh, down, what, three times? And so he had literally just got up from a knockdown and then ooh, right right back down. Yeah, nah, it was it wasn't even sleep. close. It wasn't even close. Kenny, what you think happened this time? What what was different? I think he had more confidence against uh Tyson Fury just because you know he's big and sloppy. And then mm-hmm. when he seen a guy who's built just as big as he is, he was like, Oh shit. I'm dead. But I think he's also never just been hit that hard before. I don't think anybody's ever hit him with that type of power. And then finally, I don't know. Like what you said, his it looks like all his boxing skills went away because that was a hard punch, but it was slow as shit. You could see that coming a mile away. This he he dipped his arm and like cocked it all the way back like a full windmill type. And you had plenty of time to dodge. So I don't a blind fly could have dodged that one. I've mm. I've never I've never truly seen a boxer cower in fear the way Francis Ngannou cowered at that last hit, bro. He was, he, he, I employ people to go back and just watch that last slow-mo replay. He literally did this. Like, it was, it was over with. I'm dead. Well, so before I hopped on, luckily for me, I actually saw a boxer do a breakdown on that. And the difference between, I feel like, Tyson Fury and this, because Tyson Fury came with a lot of confidence. He wasn't, you know, really worried. He was even saying that he was down to fight Francis Ngannou in the MMA ring. So I feel like he came with confidence, and then that bit him in the, you know, in the ass, even though they cheated for him. But Anthony Joshua took his time, was throwing body shots, getting the attention away from Ngannou's face. And I feel like after three knock, 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 knockouts, like Joshua set up a body shot, a left hook to the face. He started blocking, and that's when he opened up 
the defense. Now, like Kenny said, I don't know what it was that let him just sit there and wait for that long ass punch to build up. But maybe by that time too, he was already knocked out. But from one fight to another, let's talk about a fight that just happened yesterday or the day before. Yeah, the day before. LSU versus South Carolina. <laughs> I'm not even interested in the fight or the game, but I just wanted to use that to segue to the NCAA. And the question that I have for y'all right now is, which basketball division is more hyped? The male side or women's basketball when it comes to college? You setting us up. Why are you setting us up with this question? He ain't setting, setting you up. He ain't setting nobody up. The women's for sure. These past two, to, the past two to three years, like, and it's not just because, of course, like, and this is again no shade to women at all. Of course, I think overall men have the better talent, better skill set when it comes to actually playing on the floor. But women's basketball. The players that they've got coming coming through the college so far, the Caitlin Clark, the Angel Reese's, uh, the Haley Van Lifts, the uh, Juju Juju Watkins is cold, even though it takes her 30, 30 shots to uh, get 30 points. She's cold. Like, women's basketball has just been up there. It's been more entertaining these past couple of years. Like, um, and again, like, if you really want to watch fundamental basketball too, like, um, women's basketball is what you need to watch, but also you can kind of see those players that I named, like those are the ones that are breaking out in a fundamental way and becoming like true superstars in themselves. Like when right. the ball comes to them, no, like, you know, I got the, I got the rock, even like with Caitlin Clark in the uh, most recent big 10 championship game, like Nebraska was the better team for sure. But Caitlin Clark brought them back. It, what's the name? Clutch, clutch them to for them to get uh to tie the game up for it to go to overtime in fourth quarter, and then did the work uh to get them that Big Ten championship to their third straight. So, I mean, hands down, it's 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 women's basketball. The, I feel like the characters are better, the storylines are better, uh, and these women are playing out their minds, you know. So, yeah. Thanks. Kenny, what do you think? I'm going to say this. Please do not cancel me. Um, I will say Caitlin Clark makes the women's basketball exciting. Like Carlisle said, that comeback was crazy. Am I tripping? Mm-hmm. Oh, was the center for Nebraska not on Iowa last year? Was she? I swear she was. I swear. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not sure. He's either the center sure. of the power forward, but she was doing work last year. But it's, all right, well, I'm pretty sure. They had the same. They, the name sounded familiar. They looked, She looked like it was her, but anyway. I'm getting ready to say, it's going to get me canceled, but it's all right. I get tired of watching layups and jump shots all day, bro. <laughs> like, like Carlos, if you want to watch fundamental basketball, go watch that. Look, high schoolers in the men's leagues are, are – Posterized, just dunking and doing crazy stuff now. If you want to watch fundamental basketball, you can go watch six through eight. You feel me? I'm sorry. I, I, I need some excitement. I need some posters. I need some jellies. I need something that's going to get me out of my seat. But watching the same people take jump shots and just fundamental layups. And let's, let's, let's be honest. Andrew Reese. She's not shooting the ball unless she's wide the fuck open. Other than that, it's a rebound and put back. And I'm not excited off of that. That's why I said I, I would get my excitement from Caitlin Clark because she's, you know, you get a little step back from her. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's I'm sorry. That's just me being truthful. I will say, I will say Caitlin Clark, last year she was OD. This year, the OD ness took a step. She I was literally watching those highlights earlier. She looks like she started. <laughs> like the look, way look, look. she She's literally like, bro, she said, fuck a play. She's literally taking girls off the dribble, stepping back, pump fake, going back in, pump fake, step back, step back. And it, it's, it's crazy. But like Kenny said, like I said, there's definitely no posterizing things like that. So it can like exci- lack excitement in that way. But I just think the way that they go on at each other, like it's, it's super competitive right now, especially shout out South Carolina because they just went undefeated back to back years and yeah, the SEC championship. 
And so, don't like, get me wrong, it'd be nail biters, it'd be exciting that way. But I'm like, if it's a fast break, I'm not trying to see no sixth grade ass layup. You feel me? Like, South Carolina also has one of the most shiftiest players like on on the league right now. Like, she's really great to watch because she got handles, does jelly layups, and all of that. I can't remember her name. I'm gonna look it up too before we finish. But she you talking about the point? You talking about the point guard? Uh, yeah, she's not. A yeah, she went off. She went off yeah. on LSU. She's not as talented as like Caitlin Clark, but like in terms of like stylish play and just being watchable, I really, I really enjoy watching her. I ain't gonna but, lie, S, I know SC folded in the tournament last year. They might have it this year. I ain't gonna lie. To uh, they not playing. They they know they, exactly what they play. They definitely not playing. But let's talk about Caitlin Clark because y'all mentioned her a lot, and as y'all know, women's history just passed. So I wanted to go. I I, I went a little bit and de- dove into. NCAA's history, I would say. And I want to share with you a few records. So we start with women's scoring record. And it is held by Kiss, uh, Kelsey. Kelsey Plum. Her ugly ass. Um, 35. <laughs> we'll score 3,527 points. Isn't that Devin Booker's girl? Is it? Yeah, I think he dating Kelsey Plum. Now you're lying. <laughs> you're I, swear lying. To, I swear to you. Hold on. Keep going. I swear nah, to you. <laughs> oh, I, I thought he I, was dating one of the Jenners. Nah, that was, that's old. Nah, that's that, is, that, that is old. That is old. Um, shit. That's crazy. Um, Man scoring record. Pete Maravich. Who has 3,667 points. Now, I know I said... I was talking about uh, Women's History Month, and you might be wondering why I mentioned Pete. I only said that because I had to bring you a crazy stat. Like we just said, Kaylin Clark been balling, and she managed to be the leading scorer for both women and men when it comes to the NCAA, sitting at 3,685 points. More history. Darius McGee, who plays for the Liberty, WNBA. Had the record of most made three points in a single season, and she had 162. In the NBA, that boy Steph Curry holds the same record of 162. That record was shattered this season by Caitlin Clark, who has 173 three points made. Now I'm saying all that to ask y'all that. I mean, she's one of the best athletes that we've seen in a while, even considering, even not just considering like the women side of basketball. But he knowing the details surrounding the WNBA and the whole pay situation going on. And also now the rise of NILs and college playing again to the bag. If you were in Caitlin Clark's shoes, what would you do? Would you declare for the draft? Would you stay one more year? Or would you go pro and go somewhere else? I'd, like many superstars do. I'd stay one more year if what I'm getting guaranteed the NIL NI, NIL is more than uh, a WNBA contract. Oh, biggest definitely... WNBA contract is two hundred and forty one thousand dollars. Angel Reese makes a million and sixty seven. So if I'm making Angel Reese money, I'm definitely staying one more year. I'm okay. staying as long. They got to kick me out this bitch. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> like what? I'm going to grad school. Fuck is y'all. <laughs> you hear me? Mm. That's so. Andrew Reese got a hard, makes more money than the highest paid WNBA player. Yep. And think of think consider this. This is like people like the Sue Birds and stuff like that. So you really, really got to be talented to make that. And that's crazy. Bit of money. I, I I'm sorry to say this. Andrew Reese is a great college player. I just don't. I seen this today, and I agree. I don't think she'd be that dominant in the WNBA. Oh, absolutely not. Not not like a Sue Bird. Definitely not. Imagine her seeing Br- Brittany Griner down there. <laughs> barbecue chicken. I think nah, she probably. Not barbecue I think chicken she, necessarily. I think, I think she'll probably get uh, her position moved. Honestly, because what she need to play now? Power forward. She plays center now. She plays yeah, center. Yeah. At her yeah. height, she'll probably get moved to a uh, small forward. PF. Small forward mm-hmm. or power forward. Will know. she they, be effective? At that I feel position? like I feel like a smart coach not going to match her up with Brittany Garner, bro. And I feel like there's already taller girls with her in the league. I think, I mean, also, 
uh, Angel Reese is one of those athletes, like, she could not go to the league and she could still get a bag. Like, yeah, she can go model or something. That's like, she what got I'm some saying. good following on social media. <laughs> she, she, she's literally a, a whole, she's she had the, ner- she had the nerve, and I won't say the nerve because she does have this status, but what's the name? She was, Basically, after a little scuffle on uh, against South Carolina yesterday, people was questioning like why she walked away or whatever, and she said the reason why she walked away mm-hmm. is because somebody of her status doesn't need to be involved in something like that. No so, facts. That's how you lose your endorsements. I mean, and that's that, how you lose endorsements. That is facts. That is facts. <laughs> but it's crazy. You feel me? Like million dollars, Carlo. I ain't fighting either. <laughs> that's why I can't have no status because let somebody come at y'all crazy. It's over with. I'm gonna give them a a, a big boot to the face like Undertaker. If you had a million dollars on the line, no, you would not. Who wouldn't? The thing is, the thing is, the thing is, you got two ty- types of people: people that mm-hmm. think before they act, and people that act before they think. Guess which one I am? <laughs> like you said, I'm gonna act first, and then you know, I'm, I'm gonna act later. first, and then feel me just no, like, this nigga like Flaw J. Johnson's like... brother. Nah, bro, that's not Carly gonna look at me and be like, you owe me a million dollars. I like, didn't tell you to do that. Look, look, I'm gonna probably be like that after and try to blame you for my actions. I, I do that as well. But just mm-hmm. like Flaj brother, that's why he got arrested and he getting that charged man. for assault. That nigga is stupid. I don't know why you that nigga is stupid people. as fuck. Calm down, like, bro. Calm you was finna you was finna hit a girl, bro. Like like real, what was you finna do for real? Like you wasn't gonna do hit her or nothing. Hey, like hey, her. hey, that was a big woman that pushed his little sister down. I'm not even gonna lie but to you. Our sister was that pushing folks too. I'm not gonna lie to you. That was a very, that was a very large woman. She would have whooped his ass. Probably. <laughs> she would have beat the fuck out of him. I'm dead. Probably. <laughs> so, all right, all right, let me ask y'all my last question when it comes to women basketball. When it really comes to Kate McCoy, do you think that with the talent that she brings? Because honestly, in my opinion, this is not a talent that we've seen in a minute. In a minute, especially this early on, do you think that once she decides to go for the WNBA, because she's talked about it, and I think she actually might be prepped for the dad for this season, do you think that she has enough of an impact to kind of help the change or, like, propel the WNBA forward? Because the problem oh, no. with the money and the WNBA is viewership. I'm going to I'm gonna answer that first. I'm going to say no. You, you know why? Because... Mm-hmm. Getting one team views isn't gonna help the whole league. You know what I mean? Like, say the NBA, um, everybody only just watch the Lakers. They wouldn't. That wouldn't work as far as they like getting people paid. Lie. What is that? I said they kind of do that. I'm like, oh, why? No, they, Lakers people don't just back. only watch the Lakers. Yeah, I ain't people, watch watch. The, people watch the Bucks. People watch the six seventy sixes. People watch yeah, the Celtics. Now. But 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 you got to think. You got to think because of LeBron James, the Lakers is the Lakers are the most televised televised team in the NBA. Yeah, that's they're, fine. They're, no, that's and they're that's, ninth that's in the Western Conference. Like I'm, I'm saying, the that's ball, fine. The Boston, the ball, all the teams that you just named, especially because of the markets that they're in. The Boston Celtics, the Milwaukee Bucks, and Denver Nuggets do not have as much uh, media attention nor televised games as the Los Angeles that's, Lakers. That's fine, but also got to recognize the Lakers have a rich history, and they're probably the most popular team in NBA history, regardless, minus all of that. But the and thing like is, I'm the thing saying, is, well, I understand. Wait, wait, I'm not I understand. Done. I'm not done. Hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Just to, just to counter what you just said, <laughs> between, between after the Kobe era and before the LeBron era, there, that was none of that. No matter their history, they were not getting those televised games, and they were not more getting more televised games or more media uh, than any other teams. That's what that's all I'm gonna say. That's my my point is, regardless if they're just the more televised because LeBron is there, that's fine. The other teams are getting televised and and watching tickets are being bought at a rate that's still far superior to the WNBA. So like, even if say like this, say the the Lakers sell. 10 million, I'm going to say something astronomical, 10 million tickets or they get over a billion views per game. I'm saying something astronomical because I don't know the number. If somebody on the upside only gets 500 million views and two and, and two million ticket sales on the year, that's still whooping the WNBA. You see what I'm saying? Like Even if it's just because it's higher than the NBA doesn't mean everybody else is still way superior to the WNBA. So just because one team in the WNBA is getting – a crazy amount of views. If everybody's not watching other teams, it, does, it won't make a real, real difference. 
but I feel like I, okay. This is the reason why I was asking that because I'm not necessarily wanting to compare it to the NBA because that's just not fair. I don't think if I'm not even worrying about being canceled, I don't think the WNBA would ever reach the the like the level that the, the that the NBA is at right now. It's never gonna get that no. the money that that's generated. It's never gonna get that. But I'm saying like just a push forward because for example, when I'm looking at the games that they play. She's probably one of the first players that had like sold out stadium when people were out in the lines and not able to get in. And then when she was meeting Angel Reese, it's like, okay, Angel Reese is coming, which she's kind of a superstar a little bit. And then Caitlin Clark is coming and was like, oh shit, there's beef. So that's why I'm saying, like, if you have a team that has a TV contract, the reason I'm saying this is speculation. The, 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 the main people, the main demographic of people that's pushing the WNBA are women sports. Watchers, the unfortunate reality is there are a crazy amount. Uh, so okay, I'll, let me rephrase the difference in numbers between women who watch sports and men who watch sports is ridiculous, right? Mm-hmm. And you also got to think about endorsements. I don't see women basketball players getting shoe deals, I don't see people outside wearing women's basketball jerseys like that. The the most I see women get their most endorsements, I see women on Wheaties boxes. I see women in commercials. But as far as, like, people going out there and buying jerseys, buying signature shoes, that generates a lot of revenue as well from endorsements. Uh, and as far as contracting goes, like I said, the most people fighting for the WNBA to get higher pay are women. But these same women ain't watching the You're telling us to watch it, but you ain't even watching. <laughs> That's the unfortunate reality. True. That's very true. All right. Hey, you got a great point there. I don't have any rebuttal to it. But let's go ahead and switch gears to the NFL. It's been a lot of moves happening. Oh, Lord. Last week, that boy, Bronco Nation, it's right. He shall ride no more. Man, <laughs> roll that nigga out of town. But. Go ahead and get back into the frame, sir, because you know that this question is for you. Russell Wilson yeah. to the Steelers. It's crazy. it's crazy. He's going to walk away. Russell Wilson to the Steelers. Carlo Wilson. Hey. The biggest Steelers fan that I know. What They're does crazy. that mean for you? Um, First and foremost, I want to shout out Elijah, Jalon Caldwell, uh, my brother in Christ. Uh, fuck you, um, because he had the nerve to be all excited, and 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 somebody somebody clipped this not for social media but specifically for him, so I could send this to him afterwards. But fuck him because this man had the nerve to be in a group chat. Oh yeah, let's do it. like like Russell Wilson wasn't twenty first in QBR last year, twenty first out of thirty two qualified quarterbacks. Mm. We are know. going. We are going from nine and from a nine and eight season to a ten and seven season. Probably he wasn't used to the Denver house. Shut team. up. <laughs> shut up. I love you and I respect you, but shut up. Um can we can we just be real? It's an upgrade. I mean it's it at least an upgrade. upgrade. That is the only fact you stated tonight. That is an upgrade from Kenny Kenny Pickett and Mitchell Trubisky. Mitchell Shitbitsky. We haven't seen anything from Russell Wilson till he tried to become an MVP and threw a fucking interception in the Super Bowl almost 10 years over. And and you know what? I'll punch Pete Carroll to this day. The I thing is, care on the street, I'll punch the, him in the face. The thing is, I'm not even mad at that because I've said it on the show before. I've said it to my friends before. I truly believe Marshawn Lynch doesn't get that touchdown. And that's he gets me. that fucking touchdown. He, he doesn't. He doesn't. There's not a but, man alive that would have stopped that man from scoring. To answer your question, Bamba, not excited. I don't think anything's going to be different. Russell Wilson is not going to be the quarterback to propel us forward. I mm-hmm. wish we didn't have a coach as good as Mike Tomlin, so we could get one of these quarterbacks. I want my boy, J.J. And if I can't get J.J., I want Caleb Williams. You feel me? Like, but you feel me? We got Mike Tomlin. We always have a a team that will get a winning season and we'll never get a good draft pick. Y'all can have have Justin Fields. We don't want that nigga either. (laughs) Facts. And actually, you know what? 
The reason I don't want Justin Fields is because I don't want to put him in another system where he's not going to succeed. Put Justin Fields is that type of player. He needs to be on a really good team to so he can, you know, push his talents to the top because he is a good quarterback. Chicago's just shitty. All right? Nobody hey. wants to play for the Bears. The Bears don't hey, want to play for the Bears. I got, a, I got I got I got a confession, guys. I've been trying to I've been I've been shunning all the Chicago teams for so long. But in my heart, I'm a Chicago fan. I mean, Kenny, we're not gonna judge you. You are from Chicago, but your team sucks. They do now, but it's okay. They have I tried that. to deny it for so many years because they pissed me off, but I think it's time to come on home. I remember that one playoff that one playoff run they made, they fucked it up by doinking a field goal. That was probably the, the I hate you. <laughs> when I when Why I bring you, that up Bomba, I swear to God, <laughs> I haven't seen I haven't heard a louder doink <laughs> in my life from when that football hit the field goal post. Like that's the loudest shit I've heard, I swear to God. That shit oh, said, I love- doink. A clip. <laughs> That's it. I said, "Oh my god!" I don't think I was looking at the TV. I said, "Heard it." I said, "Tough." That's just tough. <laughs> That's just tough. But yeah, yeah. Um, Russell Wilson. That shit. Well, Russell Wilson, welcome to Pittsburgh. Do your best, please. <laughs> Do your best. Pittsburgh Nation. That's right. <laughs> Pittsburgh Nation. Let's steal. <laughs> We can't hear you, Carlo. We can't. We can't. I'm with that. I'm it's okay. That. I was I was saying the threat, but y'all ain't need to hear that. This <laughs> <laughs> nation let's steal all my days. <laughs> what if y'all win the Super Bowl? You gonna have to eat your words, but it's all right. If, I, if we win the Super Bowl, I will have a whole sports segment dedicated to an apology to Russell Wilson. I'm not gonna lie though. While I'm walking home, that's the only thing I was thinking about. I was like, these are the type of situations where he just might turn, turn like, not, I'm not saying wouldn't, but he just might surprise y'all. That's what I'm thinking. I will go he's with- coming in with $1.2 million as a contract. I don't think it's clear to him that you're not that guy. You know what I'm saying? You're not that guy no more. So humble yourself. Come put your best work forward. You know what I'm saying? We're going to give you a shot. If he comes and remotely gets us deep in the playoffs, I promise, like I said, I will host a whole sports segment on my own with a full apology for 30 minutes. And then wait, I will wait, go to church. What's, what's deep in the playoffs, though? What's deep in the playoffs? If he gets us past second round. Wait, so the to the AFC championship? Come on, yeah. bro. That's that's crazy. That's a crazy ask in the first year. <laughs> I mean, what would you classify as deep? I don't think if you lose in second round, that's not deep. You just got past the first round, like. Better than y'all did this year. Shit. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. That's, that's, that's Bomba, that's Bomba ask the next question. Please ask me. So the improvement. So shit. Uh, uh, so all right. So y'all know I'm in Atlanta. And you would believe that I'm a Falcon fan, but I hate them. I hate Atlantians. I hate I hate these people. But anyway, that's, that's, that's not yeah, that's not the that's not the point. Kirk Cousins to Atlanta. That doesn't like, make any sense. That didn't like, make yeah. Uh, I haven't heard that name in a minute. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> Why the fuck late in your career would you go to a losing team? It's like we got we got rid of a Matt <laughs> Ryan. Let's bring in another Matt Ryan. <laughs> That's but you had talking. the best receiver in the league on your team. Why would you leave that to go to Kyle Pitts? And to go to fucking what's Calvin Ridley? That's what you want? You're tight end. Conklin was co- well, Conklin's cold. Facts. Justin Facts. Jefferson's the best receiver in the league. Where are you? What you doing? One of. He's the best. Come on. Everybody he, knows he, 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 Okay, he, wait, he's wait, wait, wait. Five. Second he's best. Five. He's second best because Cheetah's still in the league. He's second best receiver. This is how bad Atlanta is. Every time there is a game in Atlanta, I know there is a game in Atlanta because I see another team's football jersey being repped everywhere in the streets. Falcons ain't shit. Atlanta ain't shit. Falcons are ass. Mm. And they just I don't know why they wouldn't get Kirk Cousins. I don't know why Kirk Cousins left, actually. I don't know. I know why they wouldn't get Kirk Cousins, but I don't know why Kirk Cousins said, Yes, I sure I'll come. That's fucking stupid. Mm. Hey, money. But from one loser to another, I mean this one is a little bit better of a winner. But they disappointed my ass. 
supposed to fly high. Well, they ass ain't been high in a minute. The Eagles, who just acquired Saquon Barkley. What you mean? That is a crazy pickup. No, I said they ain't been flying high in a minute. That's what I said. The Shit, Eagles. Been... I'm not talking about Saquon. The Eagles been ass. That's my team last week. I know my team. Don't tell me about them. I won't say they was. They wasn't ass. They fumbled after ever since after their game from Dallas. They just started losing, losing. Uh, what's his oh, name? Right, what's yeah, our quarterback? Yeah. Started just being a bitch, crying. He just shaved his goatee, looked like a bigger bitch. He was hurt. Push, push. They said. Push, they push. said. Did, that, did you push him? Push, they push. said. They said he looked like Raven Baxter, daddy. After he, he did say that. He did say that. <laughs> Insane, man. Lost, lost to Dak Prescott holes. and became Dak Prescott. Like I can't. I can't. I'm not gonna lie. If y'all get if y'all get y'all shit together, y'all well, y'all, y'all y'all back to the better? Super Bowl. And and if Saquon Barkley stays healthy, guys, guys, they lost the key part of the offense though. Jason Kelsey just retired. Don't look like that. Like you're not the best center in the league. But I don't. You, you I'm kind of looking at it like one of those retirement that he might come back because his wife was literally sitting on there like, oh. If he goes to a different team, I'm not going to be jumping. I really could see him coming back. I'm not going to lie to you. No, nah, he's not coming back, bro. He said he got to go be a family man. He says it's time to put, wrap it think up. Think about when you're trying man. to be a family man, your wife is like, I'm not rooting for you if you go to a different team, bro. That tells me a lot. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, that means he's going to stay home. He's not going to be on any team. He's going to come back. I believe. I believe. He comes back. If y'all have, if it's Jason Kelsey and Saquon, yeah, it's gonna be scary. That's gonna be scary. Why are you making a face, Carlo? Why are you acting like a center? A center is a game changer, bro. Jason Kelsey be moving off. Are you the crazy? Only, the, okay, the only let's let's and I'm I'm gonna try not to be as big as an asshole as I'm about to come off to be. The only reason that Kenny thinks Jason Kelsey is the best center in the league is because he knows Jason Kelsey's name. Truly, all you need is a nigga. What? All you, all you need is a nigga that knows how to snap the ball and knows how to block and knows defense and knows how to prevent defensive schemes from coming through your gaps. On yeah, your right that's side pretty, and your that's left the thing, Carlo. What you just, what you just the saying thing, the, the thing general is, offensive line. The thing, the job, thing is, the thing is, the thing is, the thing is, the only reason that Kenny thinks Jason Kelsey is the best in the league is true. because he knows who he is. It's not true. That's it's not literally true. it. Apparently, not apparently, true. he's not really good at snapping the ball either, though. The, like, bro, listen, like, listen, let, let, let's, this, let's, the, the thing is, I'm not, I'm not, no, 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 no. I'm not going to let you, I'm not going to let you, is the what, general what makes him the best center in the league, Kenny? That nigga be moving niggas. He, he creates openings. He creates great blocks, great openings and holes. And he's a great communicator on the line. What you, what you stated was the general responsibility for every offensive lineman in the league. And yet there are niggas who are still shitty. So if you're if you that, those, if what you're, and, if what and you're niggas, saying, and those niggas don't if start. If what you're saying, and those niggas no, don't they start, do start. Right? They're all, so all start, starting right? on. They're all starting on so the bare all, all linemen start, right? That's not what I said. All linemen. That's that. What you listed was a general name for all offensive linemen. The, the, so the what you're is, saying? They, I'm I'm not gonna let I'm not gonna let Kenny act like Jason Kelsey is is the reason that that the Eagles will go to the Super Bowl or not go to the Super Bowl next oh, year. Oh no, no, no he's long, not the reason. I'm just saying as I'm long as they get a. As long as they get a solid center, they will be fine. What I'm saying is, we will. From what we learned from Emmitt Smith, is we can see what a good offensive line will do for your career. So if Saquon Barkley gets a great offensive line, that man's gonna have a great season. All I'm saying. You agree on that? Disagree on that? Saquon Barkley improvement. As long as Saquon stays healthy, that's it. Right. But niggas need to watch that, out for that boy play corn, whatever team he go to. That nigga Saquon is the Derrick Rose of the NFL, though. I will say that. That nigga stay hurt. <laughs> Something always wrong with that man knees. True. But that is all I had in terms of trades when it comes to the NFL. Did I miss any? Carlos, do you have any? Any? All right. No, so, no, you did miss one. You did miss one. You did miss one. Are you talking about T. T. Higgins. He requested a trade from the Bengals. Oh, but he isn't he like uh, restricted though. I don't know if he's restricted now, but he requested that trade. He trying to get up out of there. Yeah, he's not going nowhere. Too bad for him. 
That would suck for the Bengals. Joey B coming off of a injury and T. Higgins not even wanting to be there. That's gonna be tough from a Super Bowl contender team. That sucks. That yeah, sucks. But that's all we had for you, ladies and gentlemen. This was a sports segment. We appreciate y'all for tuning in. Y'all be sure to share this with your friends, family, auntie, uncles, granddad, and more especially, specifically, that old lady over there, the one that's missing teeth like me. On that note, I'll see y'all next week. Mom.